I started this last week. I got some positive um, feedback about it, is that we're going to do now our a, biblic- a missionary biographical sketch. What that means is I'm going to go through it the entire life of a person in just a few moments and give the, your th- give thoughts about his life as a missionary. Last week we went through William Carey, great pioneer missionary. He was called the father of modern missions. Today, we, someone that is connected with William Carey I'm going to talk about now is that of Adoniram Judson. And it's the hardest for me, for whatever reason, to say his first name, uh, Adoniram. Uh, something with my dyslexia, I think. I don't know. It's just really hard for me to figure out how to say that name. But uh, he is an amazing missionary. And so we're just going to talk about him this morning. He was born in 1788. That's a long time from now, wasn't it? <laughs> uh, he grew up in a Christian home, and his father was a pastor in a um, congregationalist church. He was then, he went through school, and then he eventually graduated from Brown at the age of 19. Unfortunately, he had a friend. And his friend was a deist. His friend decided to teach him all about deism, and Adoniram Judson went away from the faith. He was a full-fledged deist when he went away from college. Then one day he was traveling a bit, going from place to place, taking off all the the religious background that he had and and just trying to, to sow his wild oats. And for six months, he was on this trip. Uh, Close to the end of his trip, he ended up at a lodge. And uh, coming in from bad weather, he asked the person if they had a room. And they said, yes, but you have to understand that the, the person next door is dying. And so he said, oh, that, that shouldn't be a problem, um, I don't know if he asked for a cheaper rate. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I thought, think I probably would have. But he, he did. He had the room next, next door to this dying man. And all throughout the night, he is hearing the groans of a person that's about to die. And he could not sleep. And so he hears all these groans. And all he's thinking about is, if this person dies tonight, where will he go? If this person dies tonight, is he going to go to heaven? Is he a Christian? If I die tonight, where would I go? And so as he's thinking about this more and more and more, he got a little bit of sleep, but then when he woke up in the morning, he was leaving the lodge and he asked, so that person next door to me, did he die? Yes, I'm afraid so. Do you know, can I know what his name was? And when the person said his friend's name, he understood that the person next door to him was his best friend that turned him away from the faith to deism. And from that point on, he decided to go back to seminary and to learn. And so I was at seminary, at the age of 20, that he came to know Christ as his own personal Savior. And then after that, he got a a burden for the lost, specifically in that of India, after hearing or reading a sermon by a very well-known missionary, and he wanted to go to India. And then, as he was on his way to go, he was going to get married. And uh, after, after being with this lady for... About a month um, in courtship, he decided to get married to her. <laughs> and he sent the father, a, the father of his, his, of his soon-to-be bride, a letter. And the letter wasn't one of very flowery speech saying, okay, can I please, please, please marry your daughter. It was more of, if you say yes to me, here's what you should expect. That she might not come home to see you ever again. That she might die in some lands but yet it be the will of God 
and he sent and there's a lot more to that letter than that but he let her decide and she married him after one month of courtship and they departed to go to india it was a 114 day journey and it was on this trip that he went from being a, a congregationalist to becoming a baptist after he studied uh, the bible and see what the bible said about baptism and since he was only sprinkled as a child when he got to india it was one of the group associated with William Carey that actually baptized him and his bride into the faith. Amazing. But then he had a burden to go to Burma. Now it's called Myanmar. But yet everybody was telling him, do not go. Do not go. Their government do not, does not like missionaries. You will not succeed. And he said, no. I believe the Lord wants me to go. And so even William Carey tried to persuade him not to go. But he went. And so they went on a, on a trip to, to Burma. And his wife, a very godly individual, uh, said, a little while we are in eternity. Before we find ourselves there, let us do much for Christ. Amen. And so she went with him, and she picked up the language of the Burmese faster than what he did. And unfortunately, war came on in Burma versus the Burma versus a Burmese versus that of the British, and Ernayam Judson landed in jail for 21 months, being cruelly treated. And so during this time, his wife tried desperately to get him released. And she would give him food throughout the days in the prison. And after the war of the British versus the Burmese were coming to an end, Burma needed a translator. And so they picked up Adoniram Judson out of the cell. And he became a translator that translated everything for the peace between the countries. Unfortunately, on his time away as a translator... He got word that his wife had passed away. And so he went back and he had much trouble. Before his wife died, he had a, a, a few um, babies that came forth and either they were stillborn or they didn't make it. He said, I am left alone in the wide world. My own dear family I have buried. One in Ragoon and two in Amherst. What remains for me but to hold myself in readiness to follow the dear departed to that blessed world where my best friends, my kindred dwell, where God my Savior reigns. So he kept his eyes on the Lord. But yet, during this time, he had a great bit of depression. He said, God is to me the great unknown. I believe in him, but I cannot find him. He went on from there and he poured himself into the ministry. Eventually, seven years after Anne's death, he translated the entire Bible into the, Bur the Burmese language. And so he then went from there, and he heard about a widow woman uh, that was a widow to a missionary that was nearby. And so he had correspondence with her, and then within a... <laughs> few days of correspondence, they decided to get married. <laughs> they were very quick at, at getting married here. And with her, she, he had um, eight children, six to, to remain alive until, uh, until adulthood. And so, but yet her health declined as well. So when, she, when he decided to go back to America, it was for her health, but yet she would not make it. He went back to America with some of his children. Some of, uh, of his other children were left behind with some families in Burma. And he came back to America as a celebrity. And he, he traveled from town to town to town. People flocked to hear him just to hear some story of something great about the unknown regions of Burma that he went to. But he didn't really talk much about stories about that. And he's like, no. I'm going to tell you the greatest story ever. That God sent his own son into the world and died for our sins. And he would go through the gospel 
And uh, he got kind of a little bit of backlash about that, but he didn't care. <laughs> and it was there that he met uh, a lady to write a biography of his second wife's life. And within time, within that month, they got married as well. And so uh, he went back to Burma with her. And his final project that he completed before he died was the English Burmese Dictionary. And so he was there, he, he, he planted a church, and his goal was to have a hundred people to be a part of this church before he died. And it was a lot more than that. He had reached 2,800 people for Christ during his lifetime. And then he was sick, so he was, was sent off to sea in order to recuperate, but days later he died and went to be with the Lord. He was buried at sea. Such an amazing person of Adoniram Judson. So many lives that he touched and still does today. Even in the 1950s, the president of Burma was asked the question, should we have a different translation uh, of the Bible? And the person said, no. The one that was done by Adoniram Judson still holds fast. And it's still today the number one translation of the Bible in the country of Myanmar. Amazing what God can do through an individual. And here is one of the things that I find amazing, one of the statements that he made. There is no success without sacrifice. If you succeed without sacrifice, it is because someone had suffered before you. If you sacrifice without success, notice this, it is because someone will succeed after. Just amazing what a person that is surrendered to God will do for him. May we all take heed to that. Our next hymn is hymn 366, I Surrender All. And then we'll get to our, our message today. I Surrender All. <laughs> 